Hi everybody, Beat Zimmerman here and today for something completely different as Monty Python used to say. Presentation technique. This is a sore topic for me. I go to many conferences and meetings. What people show there sometimes and call it a presentation is a little bit weak to put it mildly. <music> What they usually show is a battle of bullets and text. Sometimes I count like 100 words on the slide. Give me a break, guys. I do not want to read when you give a speech. If I want to read, I buy a book or a newspaper. But I'm not coming to your presentation. You're a subject matter expert. You know a lot of things about this particular topic. That's why you were asked to give a speech at this particular event. So why you're using your presentation software just to show a couple of words, I don't get it. I don't get it. You show me 100 words of text and in the worst case you're reading the same, which even brings in another phenomenon which we can discuss later. But the problem is, why don't you just stand there and tell me all this stuff? That's why you were invited to that event in the first place. Now, of course, if you were invited to give a presentation tomorrow at 10 o'clock, it is too late to start working on it at 3 o'clock the day before, of course. And then, of course, you only have time to get together a couple of bullets with text headlines and stuff like that. And then people tell you to limit your speech to 20 minutes. So you need to kind of limit your previous presentation of 145 slides down to like 80 slides, which is way too many anyway for 20 minutes. You see what I'm talking about here. The point is, a good presentation takes a little bit of time and you need to start preparing it in time. Of course, I understand people could be nervous, they could have stage fright, etc, etc. So they do things they may regret when they look at it later if you show them a film about it, for example. That's not the issue. The issue is not being afraid. The issue is your preparation and what you think is a presentation. The problem is a presentation is not a slideshow. The slideshow is just there to enhance what you have to say. That's something you need to be aware of. You are the show. You are the presentation. The presenter is the presentation. That's also why it's so totally nonsense when people come to me after a conference or something, can I have your slides? My question is then always, why? They are useless without me. If they are not useless without me, it was wrong for me to be there in the first place because somebody could have just shown those slides to the audience and I could have saved all these travel costs and the hotel, etc. to get to the event. The slideshow is not the presentation. You are the presentation and the slides are just there to enhance it. Which kind of explains why text, or text only I should say, not text as such, but text only is a heap of shite. This is not good for enhancing what you have to say, because what you have to say is already text. What you're trying to do is addressing the various what we call predicates in learning psychology. That means the four different channels of how people process stuff. And that is audio, that is visual, 
That is what we call auditive digital, which is the logical kind of processing within the brain. And then it's kinesthetic, which is more or less the touching part. Sometimes the kinesthetic part, you can also address it through speech somehow by using the correct words. But using text to enhance text, does that make any sense to you? I mean, you're speaking. You want to enhance what you say. And now you use text to enhance your text. Does that make any sense to you? Okay, thank you. Good, so the question of course is, what is helpful to enhance what you have to say? Graphics, always good. Graphics, in a very accurate way, can enhance greatly what you have to say. Of course you can use words as well, but not a hundred, not fifty, not thirty. You can use maybe seven, ten, maximum fifteen on this one slide. But together with graphics, so enhances what you say. It kind of gives that snapshot of the clue here. Maybe if you're a relatively confident speaker, let's say, and you're relatively confident about the topic you're speaking about, you could even consider leaving alone this presentation software business. I can give you a story. I was invited for a big symposium a couple of years ago and I was invited to head up a group of presentations. My slot was after like a full morning, basically, before lunch time. And people were already quite bored of having seen a couple of PowerPoints with like bullet, bullet, bullet text. And the issues are, the issues are. So I decided I need to wake up the audience, which was, I think, 250 people in the room and several people in the live stream. So I said, don't look at the screen. Here I am. There are no slides. There are no slides. I'm the PowerPoint now. And you could see a change of energy in that room. All of a sudden people go like, huh, what? Huh? what? what? No screen? No, what? What? Ah, oh. oh, here he is. Here. And all of a sudden there was an energy between speaker and audience and they were looking they were listening because they thought ah we cannot refer to reading through this later or something we cannot refer to like okay read powerpoint and then go on with answering emails and stuff they figured out if i do not want to miss something i better listen and that changed the total energy in the room i mean imagine a rock concert for example where people go like yeah Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The musicians would never perform live anymore because they go like, why the heck did we set up the whole stage and nobody's actually listening and tapping away on their laptops and computers and smartphones? Of course, it's a weird scenario, but it kind of shows you that this is sometimes what happens. If you don't get this spark going between you as a presenter and the audience. There is no energy flowing. And that's the crucial thing. And I tell you, that spark you will never eliminate with the battle of bullets and hundreds of words of text on hundreds of slides. Forget it. It's not going to work. You need to use your personal energy and enhance it. If you have tools to enhance that, fine. If you don't have that, fine. It's not a problem. You know, the world existed before PowerPoint, I tell you. Universities were able to lecture without PowerPoint. A good speech is about energy. It's not about PowerPoint. PowerPoint is a wrong name because it's typically not a PowerPoint. Actually, you are the PowerPoint if there is one. So it's about energy and you need to convey that energy to the audience. Then your message comes across. And of course, you can use the tools that may eventually enhance the message. But I repeat, you cannot enhance text with text. That's bullshit.
What you definitely need to stop doing is turning around and looking at bloody screen. Talk to the audience because again, it's about energy flow between speaker and audience. So turning around and looking back. If I talk this way, you know, do you think it's a good video? Maybe not. If you sit in a cafe with somebody and speak, you're also not talking to the picture at the back wall. You're talking to the person in front of you. What you absolutely must avoid if you have some text on the slide, which we have already heard is maybe not a good idea, but if you have some, don't read it. Don't read that same text. Because there is a phenomenon that was discovered by, I think, the University of New South Wales at some point, which is called the cognitive load. Human beings are not in a position to absorb the very same information from two different sources at the same time. What's going to happen is it phases out. You don't get the information altogether. So if you read the exact same text that you already have presented on the screen, that's not working. The information will vaporize in no man's land. And that can definitely not be your goal. Another important thing is that you need to give the audience to look at the screen if you use presentation software. I'm not talking about reading the text once more. I'm talking about gathering all the information there is. Maybe there's a diagram, maybe there's a picture, maybe there's a cue or something. You need to give the people enough time to get that because at the same time you are speaking. So they need to process that information. So they need to process the information that's coming from you, which is basically auditive digital. And then they need to process the information that's coming from the slide, which is visual. Good. So this was my five cents about fighting death by PowerPoint. I hope you liked it. See you next time. Bye bye.